Hello again, I'm Robert Fithin, and the list for Record Store Day 2024 has just been released with the Record Store Day coming up this year on April 20th. In this video, I'm going to talk about the seven different types of releases that are always coming out for Record Store Day. So if you're new to Record Store Day, these are the seven types of uh, releases that you can always expect. First up is the reissue. Now, this is my favorite kind of Record Store Day title. When they reissue an older album that's been out of print for years, hard to find, and the perfect example for me this year is Parliament with their debut, Osmium. This is extremely hard to find. Uh, if you do find it, it's usually in very poor condition. If not, it's very expensive. This is a $250, $300 record, uh, $350 depending on where you get it, unless you get it at a garage sale or something like that where they don't know what they have. If it's someplace that knows the value, this is a pretty expensive record. Coming out for Record Store Day and a reissue, not only just a reissue, but a deluxe reissue, double album with all kinds of bonus tracks, color vinyl, my absolute favorite kind of Record Store Day release. And it's a good one this year from uh, Parliament. I hope to get that one. Also a reissue this year is The Roaches debut from 1979. That's a pretty hard to find one. Uh, you've got Willie Nelson, Phases and Stages getting the deluxe treatment with the two record set of this with all kinds of out tracks and everything. Gandalf is finally getting a, I guess, legitimate uh, reissue for Record Store Day. There's a lot of uh, unofficial ones that have been out for quite a while, but this is getting officially uh, re-released for Record Store Day. So a lot of people really want that. I love the rare psychedelic stuff reissues. That's, that's, that's a favorite of mine as well. Little Richard had a really rare album in the 70s called Right Now which, you know, is not is no longer right now, but it's coming out soon on that Record Store Day um, in a uh, deluxe reissue of that as well. The Dead Milkmen uh, have their own reissue on the way as well. Another very, very hard-to-find album on vinyl, uh, Bucky Fellini. Uh, Bill Evans, for jazz fans, has a reissue coming out as well. Another super hard-to-find, super expensive album, finally getting reissued. Joe Strummer uh, and his uh, new band got that uh, reissue of that coming out. I got a reissue of uh, Dave Pike, The Doors of Perception. Uh, it's, it's sort of a jazz album, sort of a psychedelic album, really early on for that stuff too, from 1966. I have not listened to it yet, but that's something I'm definitely going to stream and then see if I like it. And if I do, that should be an interesting one to pick up again. I've, I've never seen an original of this album anywhere. So it's really cool that that's uh, getting a reissue as well. Bottle Rockets, getting a reissue, uh, a, an anniversary issue. Um, this is an example of an album that uh, is, you know, not that old, but as far as being on vinyl, it's out in the CD era. So getting it on a record, pretty, pretty rare. So it's getting a reissue for Record Store Day. Voivod and uh, The Wake getting a Record Store Day reissue, as is uh, Elton John's Caribou in a deluxe reissue. I don't, I, I guess some people will want that. Caribou, the album itself, is like a $2 album, but, you know, this one's going to have the extra record with all kinds of bonus tracks and everything. Ones that I don't think we necessarily need. I don't know who asked for these or why these are getting a reissue, but Nancy Sinatra, How Does That Grab You? Featuring How Does That Grab You, Darling? Another two $5 record all day long is getting a reissue. You can find this pretty much anywhere all the time. And finally, The Monkees again. This time it's the birds, the bees, and the monkeys. Another very common album. You can find this anywhere, usually around $5 or so. This is the mono one. I know the mono of that particular album isn't as, as uh, you know, popular. But uh, still, there's always a monkeys album coming out. They should have their own category. I, I should have said eight types of albums. Because there's always a monkeys album coming out. If they reissue that self-titled debut again, they, really, they got to stop. I love the monkeys. I, I, I grew up with the Monkees. They were my, one of my first bands I loved, probably the first band I loved because they were on TV. I am not putting down the Monkees. The reissues, got they're getting a bit much. Okay, so that's the first type of, of uh, album you can find uh, for Record Store Day reissues. And this isn't a, an album, this isn't a video about like my want list or anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you the seven types and giving you some examples from this year. Box sets are always coming out on Record Store Day. Now, very rarely is there a true box set that's compiled songs and, and put together in a box. Usually for Record Store Day, it's the type of box set where they just take a bunch of albums, shove them in a box and call it a box set, such as Dwight Yoakam. He's got his 80s reprise albums all together in a box. Some of the ones from the later 80s are pretty hard to find. Mudhoney, the reprise years, all their reprise albums in a box. 
super hard to find vinyl copies of these. I think a couple of them are actually getting issued on vinyl legitimately for the first time, but very hard to find their stuff on vinyl. I actually might pick this up, uh, but I'm not really into 90s vinyl. I mean, Mount Honey is a CD group to me. The one similar to the Nancy Sinatra and the Monkees, the one we don't need is the Linda Ronstadt Asylum Years box set. Stuff like this drives me crazy. These are dollar albums all day long, any place you go. That Linda Ronstadt with the roller skates on, you can find that everywhere. Chris from Record Talk, uh, the channel, even made a drinking game out of finding that album. It is everywhere all the time for a dollar or maybe 50 cents. So are her other Asylum albums. I do not understand why we need all of these reissued in a box. This is the kind of title that drives me crazy. And it drives record store owners crazy because... Here's the thing that people don't, a lot, some people don't seem to realize. Record store owners have to purchase these albums for Record Store Day. They really have to know their customer base to know what to order so they don't, A, not have enough of something and disappoint a bunch of customers, and B, end up with a bunch of stuff that nobody wants and now that's just sitting there and they had to pay for that. And um, Linda Ronstadt box set, I can see would be one where they're like, do I order this? Do I not order this? Are people going to want this? How many do I order if I order them? It's pretty expensive. I don't want to get stuck with this. I've already got a whole bargain bin full of these Linda Ronstadt albums. Why is this on a box set? It's just mind-boggling, especially when you hear things about how uh, record pressing plants are backed up and, you know, they've, they've got to, you know, take records out and ship them out for Record Store Day before they're even done processing, so they end up warped and everything. But we get to have a... Linda Ronstadt Asylum Years box set. Now, again, just like the Monkees, I'm not taking anything away from the artist Linda Ronstadt and her music. If you're a big fan, great. But the, the fact is, not the opinion, the fact is, these are all dollar albums all day long getting put in a box set. I think a better idea would literally be just to, just to issue a Linda Ronstadt Asylum Years box. Just an empty box. You've already got the records. Now you've got a box to put them in. I, this kind of release is just completely unnecessary. You've also got the third type, live uh, releases for Record Store Day. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. Because you never know what kind of quality you're going to get with these live reissues. You've got... The, the one I really want is the Jim Croce, The Final Tour, where it's one of his final concerts before his tragic uh, death. Uh, that's coming out on vinyl. You've got a Thin Lizzy live concert from 1976 uh, coming out. You've got The Slits with a cool live thing where they're taking live stuff from different places and kind of compiling it together. The Meat Puppets, live in Montana. I just love the title of that alone. Uh, Talking Heads got an early live concert from 77. They're going to uh, be uh, issuing a television as well with a live record. The Pixies, Fog Hat. If you love the Pixies, you're going to love the Fog Hat album. Uh, America 2 with a live one. And it wouldn't be Record Store Day without a live Grateful Dead box set. This time it's a concert from 1989, and also it wouldn't be Record Store Day without a Doors Live album, and this one from Stockholm. And the Doors is where I want to continue talking about the quality. You never know what the sound quality of these things are going to be. They reissued a Doors Live thing last time around, I think it was Black Friday, sounded like somebody had a tape recorder in their pocket and recorded the concert. We're going to go ahead and press that on vinyl. I've heard stories about of, of concerts that literally came from a bootleg VHS. Like somebody brought a mini camcorder to the concert and recorded it, and they just took the sound from that and put it on a record. I think that was Skid Row that they did that with. Uh, so you never know what the quality of these are going to be. And even if you try to find the, the concert and stream it first, which I always try to stream stuff for Record Store Day before I buy it, even then the quality of whatever stream you're listening to for these concerts might not be the same as the actual concert um, that you're going to get on the record. So you just never know. So I, I've actually worked a couple of record stores uh, at this point. I part-time work at a record store uh, named Riverbend Records. And um, yeah, I've seen them just sit there on the shelf because people are like, yeah, I've been burned too many times. So you never know about these live uh, record Store Day uh, releases. There's also, for jazz fans, if there's still jazz fans watching my channel, uh, Sun Ra and Cannonball Adderley uh, have uh, live albums coming out. Now, another type of uh, release for Record Store Day is the outtakes or demos version. They'll have demos of a complete album, such as this really interesting David Bowie one that's coming out that's supposed to be like the 
sort of like the demos for Ziggy Stardust with the original running order of the tracks and a few tracks that didn't make the actual album. So that looks kind of interesting. The Ramones from 1975, their demos, that's, they're going to be put on an album. Screaming Trees as well have one coming out. Bernie Worrell has a really interesting one where he was working on tracks and then he passed away, so they're unfinished. And he's got other musicians coming in to kind of add to them, fill them out, make them complete songs. And so it's kind of demos that are now being fully realized with the help of other musicians. So that sounds really interesting. Also, uh, Alan Parsons Project has an early, similar to the David Bowie, early uh, demos of an album and uh, orchestral maneuver, maneuvers in the dark uh, outtakes album as well. So you got the outtakes demos, similar to the, the live thing. You just don't know about the sound quality until you actually take it home, take it out, put it on the turntable, and I'll go, oh, well, this is great, or oh, this is, this is not so great. You also have remix albums coming out for Record Store Day. That's another type of uh, a release that's always coming out, remixing things like Dead or Alive with some club mixes. The Tom Tom Club have an ac a whole album that's just getting a remix for some reason. Uh, you have Ultravox with a remix album as well. And you have, for some reason, a, an EP of remixes from John Lennon's Mind Games album. Great album from John Lennon. Not sure. I think it's a 10-inch record, which we definitely don't need 10-inch records ever. But um, they did that with the other thing that he came out with, that box set. It was all 10-inch records. It's like, who, who's got room for... We don't need 10-inch records. But this is weird because this is only four, four or five tracks that they've remixed from Mind Games. And they pretty much said in the blurb that the full Mind Games remix is coming out, and this is like a sampler. So you know the whole thing is going to come out at one point. Why would you buy a sampler? I remember when samplers were free. So I, I, I would not buy the John Lennon knowing that the full thing is going to be released eventually. Uh, there's novelty stuff that comes out for Record Store Day. Some of it is downright toys, like the Beatles three inch records on a on a tiny record player they've done this before with other bands like the doors i don't i guess that's collect more of like a, a novelty collectible kind of like a little toy type thing you've also got like picture discs i, I put them under the novelty gimmick kind of category you've got a picture disc park life from blur is being put on a picture disc dio's last in line is going to be on a picture disc uh, we got the Offspring coming out with an album on picture disc. They never show anymore what the picture disc is going to look like. They used to put them in those plastic sleeves, but then we found out that those were terrible for records, so now they just put them in actual covers. So you don't know what the picture disc is actually going to look like. Uh, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. They've released this thing every which way, but I guess they've actually not re-released it in a picture disc. So now we get a picture disc of <laughs> Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Um, but yeah, the, the ones that are really annoying to me are the ones that I, w I just want the album reissued. I don't want a picture disc. I'm not interested in picture discs. They don't usually sound as good. And I, I don't, I just not into picture. I, I don't think most people are. So why not release the T-Rex album that is really hard to find in just a regular reissue, maybe a deluxe package, color vinyl, double album. No, it's a picture disc. The same way with the Cure, the top. It's another Cure picture disc just re-release the top give us some bonus tracks put it on color vinyl whatever the really sad one is the two george harrison ones because they're both really hard to find electronic sound and wonderwall music both instead of just getting reissued maybe as a double album or something together um no picture discs because when you listen to george harrison um electronic sound you definitely want the highest <laughs> sound quality for all those beeps and bops and and screeches and whatever you want that and you don't want a, the picture disc uh, lowering the sound quality of that but yeah you got picture disc single from jenny lewis who by the way was the little girl in the golden girls who cut the head cut the ear off of rose's teddy bear very disturbing to find out she's got a music career now but uh, she's got a single picture disc which leads me to the third type of novelty gimmick release these are all under the novelty gimmick nonsense singles seven inch singles we got one from queen cool cat is being released as a seven inch single i'm not sure who asked for this it's from the hot space album well cool cat on a seven inch single we got a daft punk seven inch single because when you're doing the club thing and you've got the you know the ecstasy going on and everything you definitely want to have a four minute song that you got to flip 
you got a Daft Punk 7-inch single. Garbage with a 7-inch single coming out. Uh, Pharaoh Sanders. Because jazz really goes well on 7-inch singles. That's what the jazz... I don't claim to get inside the mind of jazz fans, but I'm pretty sure they don't want 7-inch singles. I very rarely see people going nuts over uh, Blue Note 45s. But uh, anyway, uh, so you've got the novelty gimmick kind of releases. And the final kind of uh, type of release for Record Store Day compilations. Compilations put together just for Record Store Day. Some of these can be really cool. Some of them, eh, not so much. Sonic Youth has one. Uh, Hits are for Squares. Just a lot of their stuff that's been uh, collected and and voted on by fans, I guess, to put on an album together. The Yardbirds have a B-Sides compilation. Are there B-Sides? That looks pretty cool uh, on uh, on an album. Dr. John has a double album of his A-Sides. So that's pretty cool. I don't know too many uh, like career-spanning comps from Dr. John. I know there's like a double CD and all that, but as far as vinyl, uh, where it goes all the way from the Gree Gree album all the way to like up to like the 80s. So I, this does that. But it, some of them are single edits and, and things like that. But yeah, Dr. John has one. The Digits. Hardly ever see a Digits album. And now there's a compilation coming out for Record Store Day. Also, Filter. Again, another band from the CD era. Hard to find anything on vinyl from those guys. They've got a compilation. Back to jazz, you have Charles Mingus. They've compiled a bunch of his kind of outtakes and stuff after the Incarnation album. And this one's called Reincarnation. And here's the crazy one. Malfunction. The the Seattle band with uh, the early members from the grunge, grunge groups from 1990 compiled a lot of their stuff together. I never see Malfunction albums on vinyl anywhere. And so it's great when things like that come out for Record Store Day in comps. You also have the various artist comps. Some interesting ones this year that I'm going to try to get my hands on. The 300% uh, Dynamite with the reggae and the dubstep and all that kind of stuff compiled together. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there. Uh, Voodoo Blues. A rough history of Hoodoo uh, hoodoo Blues. Uh, Recordings going back to the 20s and 30s. Really cool stuff on there as well. Kind of spooky kind of voodoo New Orleans kind of vibe on that one. You've got Punk 45s from the uh, US of A, Volume 1. A lot of uh, historic punk uh, music on there. Of course, punk in those days was a singles format, so it's great that they can compile all those singles together. Not really sure why it's on the Soul Jazz label, though, but it is. Uh, you got Shades of Grey, another site compilation. This one is more dirges, more slower songs. Uh, this is the third in a trilogy. This is, it's, again, it's called Shades of Grey. No track listing available for that yet, so I'm not really sure what's on it or if I want that one. And then you've got Latino um, Nuggets collection, which looks kind of interesting, with like Spanish versions of, uh, you know, I Can't Get No Satisfaction and cover songs like that, and also uh, Latin originals as well, uh, done in, of course, the Garage Rock Nuggets kind of way. And then finally, Westbound Sound, Westbound Records, you know, Funkadelic and, and all those groups and early Ohio players. There's a comp coming out of that single disc. I want to try to get that as well. It looks really cool. And if you want to hear for yourself, kind of get a preview of what's on the Westbound Sound, the 300% Dynamite, and the Hoodoo Blues uh, comps, go to my channel in the playlist, and I've compiled uh, from different sources the songs that are going to be on there so you can actually hear for yourself before you uh, purchase those uh, various artist compilations. So those are seven different types of records releases that are always coming out for Record Store Day. I think it's a really good list this year. I know some people are just not into Record Store Day and are like blowing it off. Like, I don't need that. It's a bunch of gimmicky stuff. It's a bunch of hype. My whole thing is I don't have a lot of hype in my life. I worked in hype for three decades. It's nice to be on the other side of it for at least once or twice a year. I'm not into sports, so I don't care about the Super Bowl. I don't care about the World Series or the PGA or the Final Four or anything like that. I don't have kids, so I don't care about Disneyland or, oh my God, Frozen Part 5 is coming out or whatever. I don't care about that stuff. So it's, it's nice to have just, it's just enough hype for me. Twice a year, Record Store Day. I love all the record, you know, fanatics like myself getting together inside a record store once a year, talking, oh, I haven't seen you since last Record Store Day. And, and, and it, that's really what it's all about for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, good luck to all the record store owners in deciding what records to buy and to sell. I know that can be a total pain. I would not be good at that. I, I would be clue. I remember last year people were standing in line to buy the Verve pipe. I would have not have seen that coming. 
That, that, that was mind blowing. And then the stuff that got left over, like the Stevie Nicks concert and the Dio concert, they were just left sitting on the shelf. It's like, I, I, I'm glad I'm not the one in charge of purchasing records because I don't get this. But yeah, uh, thanks to all the record store uh, owners that are doing this and going through all the headaches of record store day so we can all enjoy it. And uh, thank you for watching the video. Thanks to the vinyl community for putting out all the videos about record store day and sharing what your uh, want list is. Those are always interesting. And uh, once again, I'm Robert Fithin, and hopefully I will talk to you again soon.